We'll be doing the final exam review. Follow along. I'm going to be going at a pretty rigorous pace. First one is distributing properties with the value 4 times 2x. That's going to be 8x. And 4 times a negative 7. That's going to be negative 28. Done. Next, write an expression in simplest form. You combine the like terms. The negative 4 and positive 2 make a negative 2x. And a positive 7 and a negative 11 make a minus uh, 4. Right? Because a uh, big number minus small number keep the sign of the big number. All right? Uh, next, use the properties of inequalities to solve this. Uh, since I'm dividing by 4, I'm going to multiply, sorry, dividing by negative 4, I'm going to multiply by negative 4. Whatever I multiply to one side, I multiply to the other side. So x is going to equal, um, well, Negative times a negative is a positive. 9 times 4 is 36. Number 4, negative 6 plus x equals negative 17. I'll add 6 to this side, which means I'll add 6 to this side. That means x is going to be equaling uh, negative 11. Negative mm -hmm. 7 plus 6, yeah, negative 11. Um, and we've got number 5, 2x minus 3. We're going to add 3 to both sides. That's going to give me 2x is equal to 8. And I'll divide by 2 on both sides. 8 divided by 2 is 4, so x has to equal 4. Write an equation to represent this problem. Uh, 4 less than 3 times a number is positive 2. Uh, 4 less would be taking away 4 from something. Uh, less than 3 times a number, 3 times a number is 3x, or 3 times some variable. And is is equals positive 2, uh, so that means this is going to be 2. There we go. Uh, let's see. Write an equation to represent these properties to solve it. Well, if I solve this, uh, first, I have to add 4 to both sides. That's going to give me 3x equals 6. And then I'll divide by 3. And that means x has to be 2, because 6 divided by 3 is 2. I'll make a graph that represents this. Okay, if I made a graph that represents this, I'd add 6 over here, which means I'm adding 6 over here. Now I got x over negative 3. And that has to be less than or equal to negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. Uh, the only way to get rid of this negative 3 is to multiply it to a negative 3, which means I have to multiply this to a negative. I have to remember that when multiplying, I turn my symbol around. When I'm multiplying by a negative number, I have to turn my inequality around. X is left by itself because these cancel out. And negative 1 times negative 3, well, that's going to be a positive 3. Uh, that was number 7. Let's go to number 8. Write an equation to show the angle relationship. They want me to find X. So remember that all this equals 180. I could take away 120 from 180, so I can just have 4x over here, and 4x has to equal, well, 180 minus 120 is 60. How many times does 4 go into 60? Well, I know 4 times 5 is 20, um, so this is 3 times as much. That's going to probably be 15. I'm just guessing here, 15 times 4, that's 0, carry the 2, yep, there's 60. So x, uh, when I divide by 4, 60 divided by 4, x will equal 15. What is the classification of this? Well, this is an isosceles triangle because two sides are the same. So I would say isosceles. And it's also acute because all the angles are less than 90 degrees. So 
I'm going to go with isosceles acute. Isosceles, comma, acute. All right. And I think I spelled isosceles wrong. Let's see. There we go. All right. Um, write an equation for a triangle and solve this. Uh, well, I know all triangles equal 180. This is 30 and 30 makes 60. And 180 minus 60, pretty easy. 180 minus 60 is going to leave me 120. So x has to equal 120. On a map, the scale is 1 inch equals 120 miles was the actual distance between two cities in the map. Uh, if it's 3 and 1 fourth inch, wow. Okay, so uh, 3 inches, well, that's going to be 3 times 120. That would be 360. And then 1 fourth of 120, right? Uh, 1 fourth of 120 is going to be uh, 120 divided by 4. And I know 12 divided by 4 is 3, so that's got to be 30. So that's going to be plus 30. So this is going to be 390, right? And uh, miles. All right, let's go to number 12. What is the circumference? Well, the circumference uh, formula is diameter times pi. The diameter is 24.6, pi is 3.14. So I'm going to get my calculator out here so I can save myself some time. I know that uh, 24.6 times 3.14, that's going to be 77.24. says round to the nearest tenth. Uh, these are not bigger than five, so it be 77.2. All right, let's find number 13. What is the area? The area of a circle is pi r squared. And the radius is 4, so that radius can be 4 times 4, which would be 16. And I'm going to multiply 16 times 3.14. Well, 16 times 3.14 is going to equal 50.24. 50.24. Number 14, what is the area of this figure? Well, let's look at this. 12 times 26 will give me the area of that rectangle. So 12 times 26, that's going to give me 72. Now i got to realize that if this is 26, this radius is 13. And to find the area, I need uh, pi r squared. So this is going to be pi r squared divided by 2 since it's half a circle, right? So let's see. Um, I know that the radius is 13, so I'm going to have to say 13 square 169 times 3.14, right, and equals, and then I'm going to divide it by 2. That's going to be... And something seems wrong here because this seems to be uh, two. Let's see here, two sixty-five thirty-three, Let's double check this other number over here. This twelve times twenty-six. I don't think I got that one right. Uh, twelve times twenty-six. Oh, yeah, that's 312. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to double check this now. Pi r squared divided by 2. Since I messed up on the 1, could mess up on this one. The radius is 13. So that's 13 squared times 3.5. 1, 4, and then I have to divide by 2, because it's half of it. 
and that is correct. So now I've got to add these together. I'm going to add it to 312. Uh, That's going to equal 577.33. If I'm rounding the nearest tenth, that would be 0.3. And, of course, um, <clears throat> since it's centimeters, it would be centimeters squared. All right. And since this is area, this would have been feet square. All right. And let's go to number uh, 15 here. Refer to this figure for 15 and 16. What is the name of this figure? This is a rectangular prism, right? Okay. And let's see. Identify the base. What well, has two bases? A, B, C, D. And it also has another one. Uh, E, F, G, H. Okay, there are two bases there. All right, uh, next it says, uh, what is the volume of this triangular prism? The volume, remember the volume formula is uh, volume equals the base times the height. The base is going to be the triangle, and triangle is one half. The base times the height. The base of this is 5, and the height of this is 3. And then we have to do the height of this prism, which would be 10. Okay, and if I go and do this, I see that I'm going to have, uh, well, 1 half of 10 is 5. Uh, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 3, that's 75. So that tells me the volume of this is 75 meters cubed. What is the surface area of this cube? The surface area means all the areas come together. Luckily, every one of these is 12 by 12. And as a cube, is 6. So that means I'm going to take 12 times 12, which is 144. Multiply it to 6 to get my answer. Uh, that's uh, 24. That would be a 2. 24 plus 2, that's uh, 26. And 6, 7, 8, that's 864 centimeters square. All right, number 19 says find the volume of this composite figure. Well, i got two different volumes here. The first one on the bottom is 3 by 2 by 6. That's a rectangular prism. That's pretty easy. I just take 6 times 2 times 3, and that'll give me that. That's going to give me 36 for the bottom. Let's try to do the top. Uh, the top one, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you right now this one won't be on it because we did not learn pyramids this year. But if I was going to do this one, Quite honestly, uh, it's not that hard. It's one-third, whatever it would be, for a uh, square base prism. And this is 3 by 2. So this would be uh, one-third of uh, 3 times 2. And then we'd have to multiply it to the height, um, which would be 3. Well, uh, 3 times 3, that's 9. Um, and let's see, 1 third of 9 is 3. And 3 times 2 is 6. So this would be 6. We add these two together, 36 and 6, and that makes a uh, simple 42. So this is 42 feet, and since we're talking volume and be cubed, 42 feet cubed, okay? 
Uh, let's see. Let's go to number 20. The spinner shown is spun once. Find the probability. Uh, write the answer in fraction in a decimal. Okay. Uh, the probability of a vowel. Well, there's one vowel and two vowels here. Two vowels out of six possible uh, things to land on. That's going to be reduced to one-third, right? Because both of these are divisible by two. So my answer would be one third. The spinner marked with four section blue, um, green, yellow, and red was spun 100 with section, oh, four different colors, spun 100 times. These are the results. Find the experimental probability of landing on green. Green was 16. That's 16 out of 100 spins. Remember, experimental probability is what did happen. We can divide both of these by, well, I think they're both divisible by 4. Actually, they're both divisible yeah, by 4. Uh, this is going to be 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 100 divided by 4 is uh, 25. So 4 over 25 would be my answer. Uh, number 22, what would be the total number of outcomes in a sample space uh, for picking a number from 1 to 20 and a letter from the alphabet. Oh, Lord. Well, a number from 1 to 20, that's 1 out of 20. A letter from the alphabet, well, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So we'd have to take what would be the total number of outcomes. We have to take 20 and multiply it to 26. That's going to give me 520 different possible outcomes. Well, 23, a bag contains six green marbles, three yellow marbles, and four red marbles. Fred removes two marbles without replacing them, without replacement, okay? What is the probability that the first marble will be yellow and the second marble will be green? Wow. Okay, the bag contains six green marbles, uh, Three yellow marbles, that's nine, and four red marbles. Nine, six, and three is nine. Nine plus four is 13. Total marbles. Fred removes two marbles without replacement. So he takes two away from here. That's going to leave 11 in the bag for the second time. Two marbles without replacement. Okay. Um, and the probability that the first marble will be yellow, the first yellow our first marble was um, three yellow marbles. So if the first one's yellow, um, that's going to be a one out of 13 chance, right? Okay. And then uh, now that I took that one out, it's without replacement. There's only going to be 12 in the bag, not 11. Um, first one's yellow and the sec second marble's green. Well, there are six green marbles so there's now six out of 12 and that's equal to one half and now i got uh to multiply these together uh one times one is one and 13 times two that's 26. there's a one on 26 chance of that happening okay and last one the double box plot shows the number of calories serving for serving for various fruits and vegetables. Compare the center of variation of the two populations. Write an inference you can draw upon this. Uh, the two populations. Well, I can say that, uh, let's see, it says here, uh, the number of calories. These are calories, all right? And that tells me that fruit, on the average, gives you more calories than vegetables. Fruit um, gives more calories than vegetables. That would be my inference, okay? Uh, vegetables, sorry about that, vegetables. Uh, that would be it, that would be my inference. And that's it, guys. Uh, study these well, and good luck on the test.